Greetings, folks. Joseph Kursky here with you wearing my geography glasses and my map tie on this momentous occasion. What is this momentous occasion? The 25th anniversary GIS Day. Started in 1999. Remember that song, Party Like It's 1999? We've been doing GIS Day since 1999. Many of you watching this have been doing GIS even longer than that, and others have been using and doing GIS for a short amount of time. Whatever your background is with GIS, happy GIS Day. Joseph Kursky here, happy to be with you. I've been asked to address the community here in Wyoming, and I've got 10 points to make. I promise to make them brief. We just have a few hours together. Just kidding. 10 points. First of all, I love the Wyoming landscapes. I'm one with you folks. I grew up in Western Colorado, FIPS code 08077. Ooh, that's pretty geeky. But the point is I love buttes, mesas, river valleys, mountains, prairies, and all of that you've got in Wyoming. I've been across your state from north to south, east to west, all seasons of the year. One time I got stuck in Wyoming on Mother's Day in a snowstorm. I had to deviate into Nebraska just to make it home to Colorado. That was on May 8th that year. What a great state. The diversity of landscapes, people, backgrounds. Second point I want to make is that the people of Wyoming are even more special than the landscapes. You've got the deep and rich indigenous community there, the Cheyenne, Arapaho, and others. You've got people that have been there for centuries. You've got people that have been there for a couple generations. You've got people that have just moved to Wyoming, all of which lends a wonderful tapestry of, I think, very tough, resilient people. And also, since you don't have a huge population, you're used to these wide open spaces. You're used to maybe spending some time in solitude. And I think that lends to your your resiliency, your creativeness, your creative thinking, your also willingness and keen ability to band together to solve problems about land, water, land use, urban change, river systems, natural hazards, energy, and much more. So I salute the people of Wyoming as well. Let's place Wyoming on a couple of other states using this tool. If you search for my name, Joseph Kursky, teaching about scale with a 3D web mapping application, you'll find this. But if not, just feel free to drop me a note. Let's place Wyoming on my home state of Colorado, which is bigger. This is a fascinating tool to teach with. Let's place Wyoming on Montana. Ooh, compare the two states there. What about Wyoming versus South Dakota? Interesting. What about Wyoming versus Utah, the aerial size of both of those states? Fascinating. Let's do one more. Let's do Kansas. Great teaching tool. I raise it because it helps us think spatially. So first of all, I love the Wyoming landscapes. I love the Wyoming people. And number three, I've worked with people in Wyoming in academia, government agencies, nonprofits, and industry. And I must say that you folks have definitely something special going on there. You're thinking creatively, holistically, and spatially. Number four, there were articles back in 1995-ish that said, you know, by the 2020s, GIS is not going to be a separate thing anymore. It's going to be so embedded in mainstream workflows and mainstream IT that it won't be a separate community. Well, in part, that's true. With the advent of data portals, hub sites, web GIS, and just the ease of configurable GIS tools, GIS has become more accessible to many people. Let's just take one example. In a county government, you've got the assessors, the parks and rec people, the transportation people, uh, the county sheriffs, and others using GIS, whereas in the past, it was more of a niche technology, right? Only a few people knew how to do it because it was kind of clunky and kind of difficult to get into. And maps are representations of reality and to actually grapple with the world in all of its complexity required deep expertise and that kind of crowded out your other interests. You had to decide whether to be a GIS person or a county planner or a hydrologist. Now you've got the ability to have GIS on your tool belt but still pursue those other career aspirations of yours. So GIS has become embedded in mainstream workflows in organizations. And that's a good thing, but there's still this element, isn't there, of GIS being spatial, 
a special and a spatial community. So we've had the Elevations Geo Summit, we've had GIS conferences in Wyoming, we've had gatherings uh, for many years with the geospatial community, people that use geospatial a bit more than others in the organization. Why? Because we still have something a bit unique to our community. What makes our community a bit unique? First of all, you have deep expertise in your community on transportation, on land management, on utilities, fish and game, etc. The list goes on. Human health. But you also think holistically about the world. And that's desperately, in my opinion, what we need to solve these perplexing, complex issues in our world from global to local. All the UN SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, they're all spatial in nature. They all have to do with change over space and time patterns, relationships, and trends. So you're thinking holistically, if we alter this variable over here, this variable is going to be changed. Or if we change the scale, this is going to change. Or if we move from this part of Wyoming over to this part of Wyoming, this is going to be different. The point is you're thinking holistically about problems, which is desperately what we need. We also think in systems that the ecosphere is connected to the atmosphere, is connected to the hydrosphere, is connected to the biosphere, is connected to the anthroposphere, the human sphere, etc. Right? We're thinking in holistic systems of systems, again, which I think is desperately needed in our world to solve these complex issues that increasingly affect our everyday lives and our own families and our own communities. It also is tied to traditional indigenous content knowledge that the world is, is a complex place with interlocking systems that all must be considered when you're solving problems. That is, in essence, why I think your community and the GIS communities around the world are rather treasured and rather unique and need to be celebrated on this GIS day, but also far beyond. I would also submit to you all that you're the builders. You're helping build a more sustainable, equitable, resilient world which is what we need to solve these problems. If you don't do it, who's gonna do it? You folks are the ones making a more sustainable world happen. You're building the NSDI, the National Spatial Data Infrastructure, bit by bit, parcel by parcel, river system by river system, et cetera. You're building the NSDI, allowing people to make smarter decisions about the planet. Number six, we've got some serious problems in our world, right? Some variables are actually going in the wrong direction. Habitat loss, urban sprawl, human health, many other things. However, I'm very encouraged. This is an exciting time for GIS. We've got good data out there that you all were key in developing. We've got good tools out there. We've got ArcGIS Online. We've got ArcGIS Pro. We've got data services. We've got hub sites. We've got the ability to collect data in the field and share it and crowdsource things. We've got configurable web mapping applications like story maps and dashboards and other things at our fingertips. I don't want to just dwell on tools, but the point is we've got data, we've got tools, but most importantly, We've got this community of practitioners making positive change happen. Number seven, there are some forces acting to bring us to this key moment, I think, in our journey together. Crowdsourcing, being able to map the crowdsource results of the birds that I see or the weather or the river systems, the stream flow, etc. Geo-awareness at an all-time high that people are aware of the perplexing problems in our world, they don't always connect it to geospatial technology. So you still need to be able to articulate why this matters to your CEO, the county commissioners, your board of directors, etc., the general public. But the awareness of water, traffic, land cover, weather, natural hazards, etc., being serious issues is at an all-time high, in my opinion. You also have people enabled to use some of the tools that you and I use on the job, whether it's a fitness app or a ride share or a package delivery or something else. They're enabled to use at least some of these tools in their everyday lives. And finally, storytelling with maps is another force happening to bring us to a key moment. People are using story maps and other infographics, visualizations of various kinds to, to, to tell their story. And number eight, there are some trends happening that I'd like to just highlight here in GIS, making it an exciting time. GeoAI, artificial intelligence, being able to extract features from imagery, being able to create a crowdsourced survey with a AI assistant inside Survey123, for example, being able to say, I want a bivariate map by census tract in Business Analyst Web, for example, done using that assistant in Business Analyst Web. You don't have to know where all the tools are, but it has huge implications for teaching and learning, which is near and dear to my heart. You also have the, the touching, at least, of BIM, CAD, and GIS, so the interior spaces and the exterior spaces being able to be mapped in a seamless environment. 
important for a university campus or for a community or for a medical center or something. Having that integrated system of the interior and the exterior spaces. 3D analytics. We live in a 3D world. It makes sense that we've got 3D visualizations, which we've had for years, but now we've got 3D analytics. So those are three trends. There's other trends we could talk about, but those are three that I'd just like to have us chew on here on this GIS day. And number nine, we've got some skills needed in the community. And I encourage you to go, for example, to the Geospatial Technology Competency Model, the GTCM. See those competencies that are in demand in the workforce and find out do a self-assessment. Where, where are my gaps? And how can I fill those gaps? Is it a MOOC? Is it a course at Laramie County Community College? Is it a course at the University of Wyoming? Is it an online program through Penn State? Is it some ESRI training? Is it a textbook? Whatever it is, is it mentoring or being mentored by a colleague? How do you, how do you fill those gaps? Get out there on the landscape. Richard Louvre talks about last child in the woods, that there's this dearth of rich and deep field experiences for younger people. I encourage you to mentor a younger person, get involved with scouts or 4-H or some group that you can get kids out on the landscape, even colleagues that you know are in their cubicles day after day, and that's a good thing, but they're working hard, but get them out in the field. We've got to develop that and nurture that earth ethic that we may know about the earth, but we, we want to have an earth ethic developed that we really do care about the planet. And that's what I love about the GIS community. You care about people and you care about the planet. But keep exploring, keep getting out in the field. Even if you're not even collecting data, just get out there and enjoy it. You've got a wonderful state to do it in. Keep reading, read outside of your own genre. Read fiction, read poetry, read outside of your own geospatial enviro genre. And I'm not encouraging you to do anything I'm not trying myself or not tasking myself to do. What's the latest thing you've read that's really interesting? I'm reading right now a biography of Sir Isaac Newton. Oh my gosh, it's fascinating. We can talk about that sometime. Also keep grounded in the fundamentals. It's easier to use GIS than ever before, but keep being grounded in the fundamentals. Hone your skills in geodesy, spatial analytics, bridge to the R statistics package, some other things that maybe you haven't tried before. Keep challenging yourself to grow and move forward. You know, one of the things that I use frequently to keep current is I look at the what's new with whatever tool you're using. What's new in Spatial Analyst? What's new in the 3D Scene Viewer? What's new in Survey123? What's new in GeoAI? What, what's new in Hub? Uh, and not just to focus on the tools, but what's new in the, some of the tools that you use. I almost always at least skim those every quarter when they come out from my organization, ESRI. And also, finally, the last skill, keep asking questions. You students out there, ask questions that your professor is not even asking you. Ooh, you employees out there in the workforce, ask questions that your boss, your supervisor is not even asking. That's the kind of employees that we want and that many of your organizations, probably all of your organizations want too. They want people that can ask deep questions and thoughtful questions. So ask good, deep, thoughtful questions. So those are nine points. Now, my number 10 point to bring up to you all is map on. GIS people using a tool that are that is disruptive by nature it crosses political boundaries it's not just one city one county one state right it crosses political boundaries it crosses disciplinary boundaries it's not just environmental science it's not just geography it's economics it's civil engineering it's data science it's health sciences it's planning mathematics surveying it's it's so many different disciplines so it crosses disciplinary boundaries and third it crosses physical boundaries right it crosses biomes eco regions watersheds mountain ranges GIS is a discipline breaking and a boundary breaking or challenging at least type of technology. It's meant to get people thinking in different new ways and it's also meant to help people collaborate to solve problems. So don't lose faith. We need those people. Sometimes disruptors in our society are not well appreciated. As much as we say sometimes that they are lauded and they are appreciated, sometimes they kind of ruffle the status quo to be honest. Don't lose heart. Keep tapping gently on the doors and windows. Tell people why this matters and what you're doing and articulate it in such a way that it's not GIS jargon. You're saving your community money. You're saving time. You're, you're saving energy. You're making your community better, a better place for people to thrive and to grow and to live. You're, you're helping the land to be restored. You've got to be able to articulate the value that you as a geospatial analyst bring to your organization. Those are my 10 points. I encourage you to map on and happy GIS day. Thanks for being with me.